In this video, I do a set of scientific tests on the Whoopstrap 4.0. First, I test the sleep tracking against an EEG monitor, and second, I'll check the heart rate accuracy during different exercises. I'll also compare the Whoopstrap 4.0 against the Whoopstrap 3.0 I wore at the same time, and I'll check if there's a difference in wearing the Whoopstrap 4.0 on the wrist or on the biceps. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. For the sleep comparison, I wore the Whoopstrap 4.0 on my wrist for two nights and at the same time I wore this EEG device called the Dream2 headband and finally I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device can actually measure your brain waves and is therefore ideal for measuring your sleep stages. Additionally, a scientific paper showed that the Dream2 headband is good at measuring your sleep stages. Let's take a look at how good the Whoopstrap 4.0 Oh, is it sleep tracking? Let's start by checking if the Whoopstrap 4.0 predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time, and that is what is displayed here. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left, the sleep stages according to the Whoopstrap 4.0. Now, each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see if the Whoopstrap 4.0 predicted the correct sleep stages at the right time. I'll highlight all the stages that are correctly predicted in green as I'm explaining the results. First of all, we see that about 60% of what was deep sleep was also predicted as deep sleep. However, also about 40% of what was deep sleep was actually predicted as being light sleep. Take this example night for instance, with deep sleep marked in purple. On top you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device, with along the horizontal axis the time of night and on the vertical axis the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. On the bottom you can see a similar plot, but now for the stages as they were recorded by the Whoopstrap 4.0. Here we see that the Whoopstrap did indeed detect all of my deep sleep, however it also predicted some extra deep sleep while I was really in light sleep. Now this second night is less good, here it only predicted a tiny bit of deep sleep in the beginning of the night and way too much at the end of the night. So it missed these deep sleep segments right here. If we actually go into the Whoop app we can see why it likely missed this deep sleep. Now this is a plot of my heart rate throughout the night with in red my deep sleep and as you can see it detected a sudden increase in my heart rate for this period. And this is the period where I had those two deep sleep segments. This relatively high heart rate is likely why the algorithm did not pick up on the deep sleep I had in these moments. However I did not have a high heart rate in this moment and it's likely an issue of the heart rate sensor of the Whoopstrap 4.0. Now I wasn't wearing a reference chest strap but there were three other devices that were tracking my heart rate at the same time. Now these are the screenshots from the three different apps. On the top left we have my heart rate according to the Withing Sleep Analyzer which did not show a peak in my heart rate. On the bottom left we have the Whoopstrap 3.0 which also did not show a peak in my heart rate. And finally on the right you can see my heart rate as tracked by the Dream 2 headband at one time during the same period. As you can see the Dream 2 and all the other devices showed a lower heart rate than the Whoopstrap 4.0. So it really seems to be an issue with the heart rate monitoring of the Whoopstrap 4.0 during this moment which prevented it from picking up on the deep sleep. Light sleep has about the same percentage correct as deep sleep at about 60%. If light sleep was confused it was mostly confused with deep sleep. Meaning that actually quite a bit of extra extra deep sleep was predicted. REM sleep was actually quite good and this is one of the hardest stages to predict. About two thirds of what was REM sleep was also correctly predicted as being REM sleep. Most of the rest of the REM sleep was predicted as being light sleep. REM sleep is marked here in red for this first night and as you can see the whoop strap picked up on most of the REM sleep I had this night. Only at the end of the night was there a slight shift between the EEG device and the whoop strap when it comes to REM sleep. For the second night we see mostly the same thing, in general there's a very good agreement, only at the beginning of the night did it miss a short REM sleep segment but overall it's quite good. This also means we can see most of the sleep cycles. To see the sleep cycles I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep together called non-REM and always ends in REM. As you can see we can mostly trace each sleep cycle based on just the data from the Whoopstrap 4.0. And the same is true for this second night, where only for the first sleep cycle we're missing some of the REM sleep, which means we couldn't pick up on that. Awake time detection was pretty good, with more than 80% of what was awake time also detected as awake time. If awake time was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep, which makes sense since light sleep is the closest stage to being awake. If we look at the individual nights right here, we can see that most long awake moments are detected, though some extra awake time is sometimes detected by the whoop strap. And for the second night we again see a good agreement, though this shorter awakening here was missed. However, all in all, this is definitely not bad. So how does the performance of the Whoopstrap 4.0 compare to that of the Whoopstrap 3.0? Well, to test that, I wore the Whoopstrap 3.0 the same nights as I did the Whoopstrap 4.0, but on the opposite wrist. I had to create a new user account for the Whoopstrap 3.0, so it cannot see any of my old data, which means it had no advantage over the 4.0 in terms of calibration. 
Here you can see a comparison between the confusion matrix of the Whoopstrap 4.0 on the left and the Whoopstrap 3.0 on the right. You can see that they are mostly the same except for the fact that the Whoopstrap 3.0 was better at tracking my deep sleep. The 3.0 correctly predicted 92% of my deep sleep whereas the 4.0 only detected about 59% of my deep sleep correctly. However, the other sleep stages look mostly the same. Now the main cause of this is this false peak in heart rate I showed you that the Whoopstrap 4.0 detected, which made it miss a lot of deep sleep for one of the nights, and that is what is displayed here. If we plot that night side by side for the 3.0 and 4.0, with for both of them the reference on top, we can see that the 4.0 failed to pick up on my deep sleep, but the 3.0 was able to pick up on my deep sleep in these moments. However, the other deep sleep looks mostly the same. So likely it's really due to this peak in heart rate that the Whoopstrap 4.0 was not able to pick up on this deep sleep. So the sleep tracking appears to be pretty okay for the Whoopstrap 4.0. However, the Whoopstrap 3.0 still performs slightly better. But how does this compare to other devices? Let's take a look. That is what is displayed here. Now this graph contains a lot of information, so let me try to explain what you see here. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average accuracy over the four individual sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. And on the vertical axis, we have the total percentage correct over the night. The better the device, the more to the top right it is. So the best device would have 100% on both of these axes. I display three whoop strap results in this plot. One is called Whoop3 Subset, which is based on the same two nights as I used for the Whoopstrap 4.0. The other one called Whoop3 is based on many more nights, and the Whoopstrap 4.0 is based on the data that I showed in this video. As you can see, both of the Whoopstrap 3 tests are really close to each other, and the Whoopstrap 4 really performs a bit worse than these. In this test, the Whoopstrap 4.0 still performed pretty well, though not quite as good as the Whoopstrap 3.0. Now, as we saw, this likely has to do with the Whoopstrap 4.0 falsely detecting a peak in my heart rate during one of the nights. Now, this makes me interested in heart rate accuracy. Let's now take a look at the heart rate accuracy during exercise. I'll test it on both the wrist and the biceps and I'll start by showing you the overall results after which I'll split them up into the separate results for the wrist and the biceps. Let's start with the accuracy during spinning. Here I display an overview of the heart rate accuracy during two spinning sessions. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the whoop strap 4.0. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurements along the blue line had roughly the same value for the whoop strap and the chest strap. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, the Whoopstrap 4.0 shows pretty okay agreement with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. However, the values do tend to be slightly below the blue line, indicated it takes a slightly lower heart rate than it should. Let's take a look at some of the individual training sessions to see what can explain this. Here we see the first example spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue is my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Whoopstrap 4.0. As you can see, I took six breaks in the spinning session where my heart rate would dip. Overall, the agreement between the whoop strap and the chest strap is not terrible, however the whoop strap often has a too low heart rate, as you can see for instance here, here, but also here and here. So it was unable to detect a full peak in my heart rate. Now for this second spinning session we see the same and it's likely even a bit worse. However, this third spinning session is actually a lot better and the same goes for this fourth one. Here the match is quite good again. This is looking a bit hit and miss for the Whoopstrap 4.0. So let's now take a look at a different type of exercise. For instance, the accuracy during biking. Many devices I've tested really struggle with this as it involves much more shaking of the arm. An overview of that accuracy is displayed here. Again, we see more points below the blue line than above, but all in all, compared to many other devices, this is not bad. Looking at the individual sessions, but now for bike rides, with again the time on the horizontal axis and my heart rate on the vertical, we can see that the Whoopstrap 4.0 in red mostly follows along with the correct heart rate displayed in blue. However, it does tend to miss the detailed peaks, as you can see here, for instance, but also here. It's sort of the average through those points. And that's basically what we see for all bike rides. It follows along with the general patterns, but it misses the sudden peaks and valleys in my heart rate. And that's also what we see for this third bike ride right here, and also for this fourth one right here. For bike rides, the Whoopstrap 4.0 performs better than many of the devices I've tested, though it definitely still has some issues. Finally, let's take a look at a weightlifting session. Now, weightlifting is one of the hardest things for a watch to accurately track, since there's much more tension on my arm and on my wrist. That is what is displayed right here. Again, in blue is the Polar H10 chest strap, and in red the Whoopstrap. As you can see, the Whoopstrap 4.0 was not great during weightlifting, similar to most other devices I've tested. It wasn't able to pick up on the peaks in my heart rate that go with each of the sets that I did. 
You can see the peaks here in blue, but the red line stays below them. So the whoop strap seems to be doing okay, but it is showing some issues. Next, let's take a look if there's a difference between wearing it on your wrist or on your biceps. That is what is displayed here. On the left is the accuracy during two spinning sessions whilst wearing the strap on my wrist, and on the right during two spinning sessions while wearing the strap on my biceps. Looking at this, you can see it definitely performs slightly better whilst wearing it on my biceps than while wearing it on my wrist. There are many more points along the blue line and far fewer points below it, where you can see far more points below the blue line when wearing it on my wrist. Now this is my first spinning session and here I was wearing the whoop strap on my wrist. And as you can see, there are some deviations between the chest strap and the whoop strap. Now for this second ride, I again was wearing the whoop strap on my wrist. And here we see the biggest disagreement between the whoop strap and the Polar H10 chest strap. And after this ride, I switched to wearing it on my biceps. And for this ride right here, we see a slight improvement compared to wearing it on my wrist. And this four spinning session where again I was wearing it on my biceps, the agreement was actually quite good. So there does appear to be a tendency for it to perform slightly better on my biceps than on my wrist, at least for spinning sessions. Looking at bike rides, the difference between the wrist and the biceps is less obvious. Now this is a plot for the bike rides with on the left the accuracy for wearing it on my wrist and on the right the accuracy for wearing it on my biceps. And as you can see here, I see less difference between the two. It might even be slightly better on the wrist, but all in all, they're mostly the same. So this is a first hint that the Whoopstrap 4.0 might perform better for me at least on my biceps and on my wrist. So how does this compare to the accuracy of the Whoopstrap 3.0? I tested that by wearing the Whoopstrap 3.0 on the opposite wrist and biceps as the Whoopstrap 4.0. The results for spinning are displayed here, with the Whoopstrap 4.0 on the left and the 3.0 on the right. As you can see, the Whoopstrap 3.0 performs significantly better than the 4.0, with many more points along the blue line and far fewer points away from it. That's also what we can see when looking at the individual spinning sessions. Now this is the result for a spinning session of the Whoopstrap 4.0, and if we take the same ride but plot it for the 3.0 we get the following plot and we see a much better agreement between the whoopstrap 3.0 in red and the polar chest strap than we saw for the whoopstrap 4.0. This is again a spinning session for the Whoopstrap 4.0, which is not great. And this is the same ride for the Whoopstrap 3.0, which is a lot better. Now this ride for the Whoopstrap 4.0 was not that bad, but again, it's much better for the Whoopstrap 3.0. Now, if we look at this best spinning session for the Whoopstrap 4.0, we see that it performs about the same as the Whoopstrap 3.0 displayed here, though the Whoopstrap 3.0 might still be slightly better. Now, when it comes to bike rides, the results are not as clear, as you can see right here. Now, based on just this plot, it's difficult for me to judge if the 4.0 performs significantly different from the 3.0. So let's take a look at some individual bike rides. Looking at an individual bike ride, these are the results for the 4.0, which are okay. If we then take the same ride for the 3.0, we get the following results. Now, if we switch back and forth between the two, we do not see that big of a difference. Though the 3.0 might just be slightly better. Now, these are again the results for the Whoopstrap 4.0 for a different bike ride. But again, the Whoopstrap 3.0 performs ever so slightly better, which we can see better if we switch back and forth. So this is the 4.0, the 3.0, the 4.0, and the 3.0. Now they're looking at the last ride I want to show you, the two performed similarly. So these are the results for the 4.0 and these are the results for the 3.0. So if you go back and forth, so again the 4.0 and the 3.0, I wouldn't say there's a big difference. Finally, looking at weightlifting, which is displayed here for the Whoopstrap 4.0 on the left and the 3.0 on the right, we can see that both performed about the same. They're both not great at tracking your heart rate during weightlifting. As many of you will know, I was pretty happy with how the Whoopstrap 3.0 performed and with the new functionalities of the Whoopstrap 4.0 that has the potential to improve even further. However, based on this first testing, it does seem like the firmware will need to improve to get the heart rate tracking on par with the Whoopstrap 3.0. I suspect that the sleep tracking algorithm is the same on both devices and that an improvement of the heart rate accuracy of the Whoopstrap 4.0 will make the sleep tracking at least as good as the Whoopstrap 3.0s. Now, the heart rate tracking of the Whoopstrap 4.0 was not terrible, but definitely not as good as the 3.0, at least not for me. We've seen before that upon release, devices need firmware updates to get their optimal performance, and I hope and suspect this will also be the case for the Whoopstrap 4.0. So should you buy the Whoopstrap 4.0? Well, the sleep tracking algorithm of Whoop is still amongst the best out there. And if they manage to get the heart rate tracking at least up to the level of the 3.0, which I suspect or at least hope they will, I would definitely still recommend it. I still need to test some of the new features like the temperature and SpO2, but even without those, I was already happy with the 3.0. The main downside of Whoop in general is that you need a monthly subscription. Now this seems to be a trend since Aura also introduced something similar with their new ring. It's up to you to decide if this is worth it for you. If you do 
you decide to purchase the Whoopstrap 4.0, I'll add an affiliate link below that provides a discount. Now, as a disclaimer, I also earn a bit of money if you use that link, which supports the channel. However, this video is not sponsored and I bought the Whoopstrap with my own money. Of course, you can also decide to wait as I'll keep you updated on new results over the next weeks and months based on new firmware releases of Whoop. If you're interested in those tests, consider subscribing and also liking this video so the YouTube algorithm will promote it. In the meantime, consider watching some of my other videos, for instance, the ones on the Aura Ring and have a great day. Thank you.